Welcome back to the Tool Crib. Well, today I destroyed the Ludman Ratchet Driver. And what I was using to test this with was a, this is a calibrated AC Delco uh, digital uh, torque meter. And the low end on this is 25 PSI and it ranges all the way up to 250 PSI. Now, normally with a quarter inch ratchet, you can expect them to pull in somewhere. Th their ranges kind of vary depending on manufacturer. So normally you can be somewhere in about the 10 to 12 foot pound range of what this will handle all the way up to maybe 60 PS or 60 foot pounds. Uh, I was really expecting this to make it to the 25 PSI. Uh, or pounds or uh, foot pounds of, of torque, which is equivalent to about 34 Newton meters. On the high end, something like a, like a wear ratchet has, uh, I think their quarter, one of their quarter inch drives has 80 Newton meters. That's about uh, just shy of 60. It's about 59 foot pounds of torque that it can handle. This one, however, didn't even meet the register at the low end of this. So apparently I'm going to have to get a, a another digital meter that it has a low end that's lower than that because I was really truly expecting this to make it to the 25 PSI mark or, or foot pounds mark. I keep saying PSI. I don't know why I've got pneumatic stuff in my head right now. Uh, 25 foot pounds worth of torque and it just didn't make it. So let's take a look and see what happened. So I'll set this to the side. Now, what's interesting about this, and there are some pieces that when it when it came apart, it really, really came apart. So what's interesting about this to me is that the gearing on this did not strip. What happened was the housing is what gave. The, the housing literally exploded on this thing. I was really expecting the gears to strip out before the housing would, but the housing is, is the weak point on this, not the gearing. I believe that the gearing could have handled a bit more pressure. I think it probably could have got up into that 30 PSI or again, I did it 30 foot pound range or maybe even higher because I don't even notice any kind of stripping on that whatsoever. I don't know if I can get that to focus. Uh, but the gearing on here doesn't actually look bad. So let's see if we can't, the, the housing on here cracked too. So let's just go ahead and take this off and see if we can not inspect it a little further and see exactly what happened to this thing. Oh man, that just doesn't want to come off. It's spreading apart, but that, I might have to get a screwdriver or something to open that up. I'll tell you what, let me get that off and we'll take a better look at the inside of this, see what happened to it. Well, I finally got this thing apart. This housing was actually pretty tough. That plastic on there is actually pretty strong and to get it to spread apart and hold open long enough to get it off of its uh, where it retains at took a little bit of force. So I actually used a couple of Leatherman tools to get it off there. So here's what we got. Uh, this housing, this is the lower housing. It's going to come together pretty much like so. And this is actually what destroyed. Uh, the gearing all actually looks pretty good and it came apart in pretty much three solid pieces. Uh, there was a couple of little flakes of steel that I couldn't find them after the fact, but for the most part, this, this p piece is what ended up being the weak point. I was, it's interesting because I thought that the gearing would actually strip before the housing would, but you can see on the reverse forward and reverse mechanism of this, that the gearing if I can get that to focus, the gearing on there is actually not too bad. I mean, I don't see any evidence where the gearing stripped out at all on that. 
And if we look at the shaft itself, there is a little bit of a mark I found in one spot, but I think it's right there. It's I think when this thing destroyed and it, when it bent over, I think that's what caused that. I, it wasn't the gearing that stripped on it because normally if you have a ratchet mechanism like that that strips out, then you're gonna see a wide path of, of the teeth that are just gonna bend over and fold over on you. So obviously, the weak point on this is definitely in the housing. The keeper was fine. It didn't, nothing happened to it. The little ball detent. Uh, and then this is where your switch mechanism on each side, you got the, the little paddles for the back side of those gears. All that was intact. So it, it's not bad. Uh, I was, I was a little disappointed that it didn't register up to 25 foot pounds of torque, uh, which is going to be right in that, uh, 34 newton meter range now i've seen uh, a lot of people are going to be critical of this uh, because they're comparing it to ratchets true ratchets and the thing with a ratchet is a ratchet has a lot broader head on it so it has a lot more behind it uh, than what you're going to get out of an inline driver that's one thing to keep in mind when when being critical of this type of tool i am still disappointed because i think that this should have held up to that 34 newton meters or 25 foot pounds of torque. However, I didn't think it would go much beyond that. Now, uh, the reason I kept going with it is because I felt like it was really, really close to registering uh, at that 25 p or 25 foot pound mark. So obviously, I'm going to have to try to redo this test with a different digital uh, torque meter that will get me down into the 15. Uh, PSI or uh, 15 foot pound of torque range to sort of see where we're at. So unfortunately, uh, I don't have any accurate measurements on it because it just wouldn't register up to that 25 foot pound mark. But the good news is, is that the gearing is actually better than what the housing is. Obviously, the housing is going to be the weak point like we discussed before. So for most screw applications that what you're going to be using this on, uh, if you're just driving uh, screws into wood or or sheet metal screws that you're just taking something out that's already been pre-drilled, uh, stuff of that nature, you're going to be all right. Uh, if you're doing a probably quarter inch bolt, maybe a quarter inch lag or something like that, you'll probably still be all right. It's when you start getting up in higher ranges where you're trying to uh, put a 3 8 inch socket and use socket adapters or something like that with this tool. It's going to be well out of its range when you start getting into something like 3 8 of an inch or, or higher. So while it is convenient and good for what it's designed for, Obviously, there are some strength issues in the housing that they need to correct going forward if they're trying to make this a better tool. Uh, of course, with better quality comes higher price. So I doubt that we'll see that from Leatherman. But for light duty task, I still think this one is okay. Now, the good thing with this one is, or with this ratchet driver is, I didn't just buy one when I bought this, I bought a second one. So I'm gonna be trying to drive uh, some different lag bolts and stuff like that to see exactly what it can handle. And now that I've got a better feel for what its breaking point is, uh, I'll know better when to when to back off of it, when I think it can handle it or not handle it. So this has been the destruction test for the Leatherman Ratchet Driver. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.